Hey everybody, happy new year. Yeah. Hope you had a very good new year. Happy Christmas. Everyone was okay. You enjoyed it somewhat or got through it. Um, I enjoyed it. I like that time of year. To be honest, I think it's absolutely lovely. Here we are with the portfolio. Um, and you can see that Isabi's actually gone, right? Why is Isabi gone? Uh, you remember from one of my earlier videos, I actually, when I copied it, Isabi was young, 21 years old. And I had said this, the first losing month and, you know, I'm copying her and talking about it in videos. I, you know, it's horrible to sort of put that pressure on someone. So I don't want to do that at all. Um, so there we are. She's sitting there. Hope she does really well and calmly and just gets back on her regular form. Now, it turns out that if we go and look at Isabi. Uh, she kind of agreed with me and she's changing her whole style. She released the post recently. Uh, here we are. So, uh, hello and happy 2024 to all of you out there. This is three days ago that she posted this. This is a very new thing. Um, as of tomorrow, 2nd of January 2024, I'll be changing my trading style, which I alluded to in my earlier comments. Uh, these changes come about due to experience I've had managing other people's money. And after two to three months, officially, as an eToro PI, I concluded that my trading is affected by the sheer responsibility of having to deliver results for other investors. It's a lot of pressure. It really is a lot of pressure. She goes on to say, for some of you who have never managed around 300,000 of other people's money, this may be hard to understand. I had a clearly defined goal, trading strategy, and proven track record, which she had done well, right? We saw that she'd done well, uh, which people believed in. And as this became no longer deliverable for me, I needed to be honest with myself and face the fact that the system that works for me does not work for me when considering others and their hard earned money. As mentioned earlier, I'm 21, She's only 21 years old, right? Remember what you were like at 21. I do. Everything I learned about trading and my trading mentor, my dad, tells me that it's the right way to move this decision. Um, I will now move on to managing my own portfolio outside of eToro without the investor pressure to deal with. So that's it, just too much pressure. Um, I don't know if you've ever managed a large portfolio of other people's money or had something where people are always watching and you, you probably get, I, I've never done that myself. I've had a channel and you know, you get nice comments and bad comments and some of them can derail your, you know, you can start to be captured by your own audience. You gotta watch out for that. All content creators talk about that. You gotta just sort of, detach sometimes, you know, and just not listen, keep doing your thing. Imagine with trading, imagine you've got like 300,000 of other people's assets. I mean, even if it's just me and there's a few people watching, I'm worried about how that's gonna look. Am I doing the right thing? I second guess myself. Imagine with all these other people's money and everyone's sort of, you know, watching you and the pressure of that. Anyhow, she said, no, it's not for her. She's gonna change. Now she is gonna stay on eToro. You can read this for yourself. Um, she is going to stay here, but she's mainly going to trade uh, German 40 Bitcoin and she will now also enter other stocks again on the basis of buy, sell, hold and exit when appropriate. Now it is a different approach she's going to be using. In the portfolio, I was about $16 down, I, a loss with her and I just called it off. I just thought, why, well, you know, she's under a lot of pressure. She's changing her style. She said that very openly, I'm out. You know, let her get on with it. Let her get on with it. I've got other people in the in the copy, in the portfolio. Swissway, uh, Melvin, uh, Celeste over here, uh, Kresimir now, who've been doing well. Amit Cook, look at him up there. So there's other people in my portfolio who I can use that money with. I'll absorb the $16 loss and wish Isabi well in the future. I hope she sort of finds a mojo again and manages to relax without all the eyes. She's obviously just still, you know, learning. And um, at 21, there's no way I can't deal with that pressure now. 21, I wouldn't be anywhere near this. So um, yeah, my hat's off to her anyhow. I hope she does very well. So Selesh, look at him. He's on $62 uh, over there. Let's have a look at how he's doing so far for the year. Already, he's up 1.84% for January. 30.90% uh, last year. I came in luckily there, 8.18%. But 30% for last year, 1.84% so far this year. He's off to a flyer already. Thank you, Selesh. Risk scores are still low, max drawdown still low, copiers are still going up. Of course they're going up. People see him doing this. This is what we're all looking for. Um, now it's really nice just to see these guys in my portfolio. These ones here, so, oh yeah, something's changed. I, this may be temporary, it might not, but do you remember how I found these uh, these guys? So uh, Selesh, I had found him before, but Selesh, Melvin and Marco were all on the new copy trader page. Remember I made that video showing the new copy people page. Simplified it, no end for me. I didn't like the old page, the old way of finding them. And I could just search for the most consistent traders. Isn't that what we all want? Who's done best over a long period of time and had low risk and low drawdowns? Boom, show us that, right? That's, and they did show us that. And I found some useful people to trade, to copy trade. And now look, I've got green and I've got green here. Fantastic. 
But I recently went to the Discover page. Remember, this is where we can sort of see all of the different markets. There's Copy Trader. If I go to Copy Trader here, click, it's back to the old one. Where's my lovely new trade page gone? It's gone back to trending, uh, long term stock investors, long short investors, multi strategy, which is nice, great, but I never found this very useful. Um, maybe my fault, maybe let me know in the comments if you find this more useful, but I like that new copy people trade uh, page. I go here and look, there's a copy trader up here. I thought maybe I'm getting to it. Nope, it's the same. It's gone. I hope that comes back because I found it super useful and that's how I found some of these people, at least these two, um, who, who are doing really well for me at the moment, you know. Amit Cook's also doing really well, but I hope they bring that page back. Maybe they're reworking it. Does anyone know? Leave it in the comments why they got rid of it or why they've changed that or if you know anything about it because it was super useful. So uh, Melvin, Melvin's, uh, I think he's a tiny bit down so far for this year. Tiny, 0.35% down so far in January. 9.51% last year, 72.9%, it's basically 73% in 2022. I don't know what was going on there, just bonanza, anyone who's copying him, just, yeah. um, but there we are, 9.51 last year, really happy with Mel Melvin, uh, consistent, steady trader, doing well for me, really lovely to have him in the portfolio, lovely to see the green. Swissway, how's Swissway doing? Uh, I'll go to his stats over here, he's down 0.03%, so 23.99, let's call it 24 24% last year, 30.21% the year before. Again, only two years, but they're consistent and they've been consistent. Has its risk scores super low. They even came down minus nine points, about 10% drawdown in the last uh, 10 months, yearly drawdown, max yearly drawdown. Doing well, thank you Swissway. Such a short amount of time to have already made me 3.78%, that's great. And you can see the value. This is how much I'm actually copying them with. Uh, no, this is how much it's worth at the moment. Where is my net invested? Let's change average open. Let's just go change uh, average open. We'll change it to net invested, which is the amount I've really invested with them. If you count all the money I've added then subtracted, it's the true amount, you know? So I'll click apply here. Net invested, so I've invested 800. It's now worth 854, 800, 846. Hmm, fees maybe. 490, I net invested 507, 400. That's now worth 407. So Autobus, Autobus, Kresimir down here. Weird thing with Kresimir. Watch this. So his statistics are showing that um, he's made 5.13% in January and not with me. And I realized about three weeks ago, I wasn't copying his trades. I have no idea why, none, but he had a load of trades open, which I simply didn't copy. If I go to his uh, portfolio and I go here in his history, Look, he was closing trades yesterday. All of these sort of big trades yesterday in US dollar against the Swiss franc. I didn't copy them. I just I hadn't copied any of these trades. Uh, it's a it's a bit nuts. I don't know I don't know why that is. Now I'm copying this one. We're back on and I'm copying him again. But my I'm out of sync with him. At the time when they were trying to sync up everyone's portfolios, for some reason my portfolio, my copy of him was completely out of sync, and I don't know why. I had copied open trades, he didn't have any open. They were new trades he opened after I was copying him. I was copying him with enough money to catch those trades. I don't know what happened. How much am I copying him with? $400? Maybe it wasn't enough, but I think it was enough to catch those trades. It just didn't copy. I don't know why, whatever, I'll keep an eye on it. Um, but we're at $8 uh, so far. We've made 1% with him. Should have been more, but there we are. Um, Christmas. So these ones are all, uh, these ones are looking good. Now, fund manager, Zek. Uh, still not in profit. He's still down. Uh, we look at his stats. So he had a very good year last year, 24.74%. Again, we've got all these years we can see. Only one, two years where there was a loss. Um, but uh, I copied him just before he started making losses about there. And uh, so I'm at a, my copy of him is at a loss. So far, he's at 0 0.06 down for January. But he did end last year with 24.74%, which is a really healthy return. He did very well. So I'll just wait. And over the long term, that will pick up, hopefully. And uh, we'll be in green. Amit Cup. Look at this stuff here. Look at Amit over here. 2.81% so far in January. 2.8%. 79.5% last year. Good lordy. Only one year was at a loss. That's 2020 minus 7%. We've got 38, 35, which is really 36. 13%, 79.5% last year. I only copied him for like the last bit of the last month. So I didn't get 79%. What a year, you know? 
Uh, he's at 2.81% so far. Now, I haven't copied him with more. I don't know why. I could add some funds. I could go in and invest more, but I haven't. I haven't. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure why. I've got $848.89 available. Uh, I just didn't want to sort of fly into it. I'm only copying him with $300, though. Um, looking at him, is the risk, but I don't know really what, something in my subconscious keeps stopping me. I don't know why. His risk scores are higher than other people, but look, 7.71% um, max yearly drawdown. That's not bad at all. Steady copier increases. People have seen the benefits of copying him. On the chart, let's just go again and have a look. Let's go, not current year, let's go so from one year ago. We see drawdowns from 16,800 down to 15,600. Here's 17,200. Let's do it all the way down to here as though we'll count that as one. 16,000. So that's a thousand. There's no major, major drawdowns. I don't know why I'm panicking here, but for some reason I am. I'm going to go back to the stats. Max Healy drawdown 7.71%. Don't know why. Not sure why. Uh, is it because of the things he's invested in? How long he's going to hold them? I don't know. Uh, let's go to the portfolio. Should we put more? Let's put another 200. We'll make it 500. We'll add 200 to him. It's going to do its automatic reallocation thing. Or probably not. It will just do it properly because we're just adding. Let's do 200. So now net invested is going to say, there we are, 500. And it's in alignment. So it's opening those new trades, uh, which will all be in these. He hasn't got any other trades open. It's just going to open more trades in these companies. Uh, but there we are, uh, 500. Let's see what happens with that. I've now got 648 cash available. So these ones are all, look at them all. There's these, these, the new ones are doing great guns. Uh, Javier is still actually making money, but it's, I've put him in a really difficult position. 0.15% in January, minus 6.69% last year, but he was making up those, those numbers. Jose, Jose, I think I'm going to stop with Jose. I've been copying Jose for quite a while. Uh, he's at 2.12%. <laughs> Hold on a minute. He's doing well. He's doing well. Spoke too soon. He's back. 2.12% so far in January. He's another one I've put at a real disadvantage because I'm copying with so little. He has to make huge gains just to make back that money. We've got a lot of years. He's only got one, two at a loss. Last year, minus 0.31%. Back in 2019, minus 5.33%. He's at 2.12 so far for the year. So maybe it's come around. Maybe he's in the zone again. Let's leave it. Again, though, 237. So he'd have to make exactly... Really, what? That's insane. Look at that. 237. So I have to make exactly 10% to make 23.7 uh, in profit. So let's see if he can make the 10%. Let's just leave it with him. It's only $237. Let's see if he can make that money back. But these guys are doing so well. It's sort of there's an opportunity cost, you know. If I'm using my money in the wrong place, it, it's, it's also a cost. You know, if I've got my money deployed with someone who can make me 1%, when I could have had it deployed with someone who can make me a sort of stable 15%, then I'm, I'm losing 14% by, losing, by leaving it there. It's a, it's a, bad, it's a mal bad investment. But let's see. Let's just leave it there for a little bit more because I haven't even used this. Once I've used this, if I need more money, then I can close it. I think that's fair. You know, at least use the cash I have available first. At least it's working. It's doing something. There we are. How did I do for the last year? So for the last year, rubbish is what I did, 0.64%. Meh, meh. It's not very interesting, is it? Because this whole, look, it started winning towards the end when I changed the investors. We started to get some positive returns, but the rest of the year was just up and down and up and down. You can see it, look, down a bit, then it goes up, and then it's down slowly in a boring... Look at the losses, they're not even big losses, it's just... And then, boom, changed them and it started to actually work, so I should have done that sooner. But there we are. Um, that's how I am at the moment. So thanks all for watching my uh, videos last time about the bonds, although not many of you did. I was on the motorbike, I was in the countryside, but I was looking into the bonds thing uh, with the bank, this new bank that I'm joining. I talked about why I'm joining this new bank and how I'm sort of losing trust in my old one. And I'm looking for the safest options going forward. I'm selling the house, gonna have some money. How do I keep that money safe? How do I invest it very, very safely? All right, that's my question in the last video. And you can see what I'm sort of thinking about that. Now bonds, they didn't seem that good. The bank was saying, you know, um, inflation's at 3.7%. The bonds are going to give you 4%. So you're making 0.3% in real terms. And the, the inflation's come down to 3.7%. A few months ago, it was up at 7.6%, I think. And who knows where it'll go next. So the bonds aren't seeming that good. There's one type of bond which was amazing. It, it, it's backed by the full faith of the government. So you buy these bonds for 95 euros. In three months, I'll give you back 100 euros per bond. 
amazing. So if you spend 150,000 on them, in three months, or 200,000, in three months, you can make like 16,000 euros with like no risk. The only risk is if the government collapses. So there are certain types of bonds which seem amazing. I was like, well, how often do those come out? She said, well, it's just rare. And when they come out, they usually bought really quickly. So if they come out, we can, you know, phone you and say, do you want to invest? And then you go for it. But the money has to be sitting there waiting for them. So it's, it's a bit, it's tricky. There's no such thing as like, I thought that because it's the government, because it's bonds and because, you know, you're lending the government money, they'd give you really nice rates of return and it'd be low risk, like some sort of paradise of low risk, stable returns, good returns, high yields, above inflation at least, backed by the government. Nope. It's the same everywhere. The more risk you take, the higher your rewards will be. You want to take less risk? Well, your reward's going to be less. It's the same everywhere. So I have yet to find this magical space, this sacred magical pool of wonderful yield for low risk, you know. Um, some of these guys are doing all right so far. We'll see how it goes. Um, always what I'm looking for. But I'm going to talk to the financial advisor again. A lot of you in the comments have been talking about property. Take that money and invest it in property. And I've been watching videos about Airbnb and Booking.com and um, letting, uh, get, investing in property to rent it out to other people. Malta, where I am, obviously huge tourism destination, makes the most sense. It's what I've been looking into, even before your comments, but a lot of you are thinking the same thing. Um, so I'm looking at that. And is it best to sort of buy your house and flip that house? I'll, I'll, start, I'll do a whole video about what I've been thinking about that. Or does it make more sense to rent them and sublet them? But most people don't want subletting. So what types of properties can you sublet? Bigger property, you know. Um, so I'm looking at all this stuff. Really interesting. How can I get this money? Is it high risk? Is, do you want to run a business? Because the second you're doing property management, you're running a business. And I've done that before. 12 hour days and, you know, it can get difficult. Are you ready for that? Am I ready for that? Uh, it's a different type of investing because you invest in the property, but then, you know, there's the business. With this, with trading and investing, with me, I mean, it's just, you know, I make videos. Realistically, I make videos and I copy trade. I've learned to sort of pick people, hopefully, now, hopefully, we'll see. But with trading and investing, I guess it's your, it's your time, your capital, your money that you can deploy, and your skill, right? That's what we're always mixing to try and make reward. Same thing with this, except you're running a business, so it's your time, it's taking your time, your skill, which is can you manage these things properly? Can you pick the right properties and all the rest of it? And your capital to invest, to start it off. Always the same thing. Always the same thing. It's just with normal jobs, people are investing their time and their skill. They're not investing their capital in the same way. They are, but in other ways. This camera was an investment. This computer's an investment. They've paid off for me. So I think very often, you know, it's an investment plus skill plus time. Anyhow. I'll make a video about that. Um, any other suggestions for what to do, please let me know. If you have experience with property lets or anything, write your experience in the in uh, traps, things to watch out for in the comments. Please let me know. But I'm watching videos about it. I'm learning. I'm learning interesting videos out there. I'll link to them in the next video I make, which is about all this stuff, what I'm looking at. There's some great resources, you know. Um, that's it for now. Hope you're all very well. Hope you have a happy new year. Uh, and stay safe with the investing and all the rest of it. Let's see what this year brings. Hopefully it's great. Hopefully it's wonderful. Uh, peace. God bless you all. Have a lovely year. See you in the next one. Bye.